Well, hello, everybody. We are GFBS. We're Grand Fork's best source. Time now for your Home of Economy podcast. Joining us in the studio today, Wade Pearson. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm really doing great today. Beautiful day today. Yeah, it's been a while since you've been in the studio. Yeah, it's been a while. I've had some uh, things going on, and uh, we, of course, we got other people on the team that we want to get, want to get out there, sure. and get people to know. How is it going at Home of Economy? Yeah, it's going really pretty good. Uh, you know, a lot of things are doing well. Um, you know, furniture is doing great. All the uh, all the stores, except for the ones way out west, are uh, are doing real well. And uh, the stores out in Wilson and Watford are, you know, they're slower, but they're a little better than mm-hmm. last year. So that that's good. Yeah, you know, spring is in the air, or at least yeah. like one or two days a week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it feels like winter again, but yeah, um, it's you chilly, know, but it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, out west. Uh, you just had the big grand opening at the new rugby store. How'd that go? Yeah, that went really great. And I was I was kind of a little nervous about it because we opened up back last September, then we put off the uh, we put off the grand opening sale just because you know the timing. You know, mm-hmm. having it at the end of October, you remember, it was pretty bad numbers back then. We didn't want to you know we didn't want to make any risks. It was not worth it. So you had uh, some local celebrities at the grand opening. I heard. Yeah, we had a lot of a lot of great people. We had uh, the mayor was there. She was super gracious. A lot of help in, in getting us open. Um, had her banker there that went to rugby and he said he's walking around and a lot of his old teachers were there stopping him and talking to him and yeah. you know, it's all fun. I had a, had a guy from there that, uh, rem- worked with my grandmother in the church choir back in the seventies oh, wow. and talked to me and, you know, it's you know, cool. with a challenging year and I know how good your team is here at home of the to- economy in Grand Forks, uh, cause I'm in there all the time, but, um, you must have great teams at all your stores, uh, to get through this particularly bad year. Yeah, you know, um, and it wasn't always the case as much, and and now we have uh, such great people in in all the locations, and uh, you can trust them to follow through, and uh, and they're really kind of buying in, you know, buying in with what we're trying to do. So it, it's really going good that mm-hmm. way. You know, we talk a lot, or at least I do, about my love of home economy. In fact, I just talked to Scott yesterday. My mower is done. I'm going to go pick it up tomorrow, and he just does great work. But another thing. Uh, Wait, that I buy at least every other week at Home of Economy is dog and cat food and my pet supplies. We've got a, basically a mini farm at my house. But your store sells a lot of items for pets. Uh, I mean, everything. Yeah, well, we're, uh, you know, being a farm store and whatever, it's a, it's a real natural being, uh, being in the pet business. And so, uh, you know, it's something we've tried to uh, focus and do, do even better than we used to and having having more brands and so we're satisfying everybody and uh, we've really upgraded our uh, pet toys it's just kind of fun to be able when you're in there to be able to look for something new for the dog i've got five dogs so. oh you have five dogs five dogs wow i went from three to one Ooh. this past winter yeah i know it, w- it was a tough winter but um we we rescue animals oh so our, our animals are all getting up there so i'm down to one dog and three cats and i think there's 180 years between the four <laughs> animals so but you guys have got such a good supply so many different brands can can you name any of the brands of, of dog and cat food because you guys cover a lot yeah well you know there's everybody's looking for something different you know we've been using uh, science diet ourselves for mm-hmm. uh, quite a few years same with me i've been i've been a real big fan ever since uh, i had a factory tour of their uh, their factory in topeka and then oh. their research center which was 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 great and uh, you look at what they're doing you got to talk to you know their head nutritionist and you know guy with a phd and mm-hmm. stuff and and went through the whole thing it was uh, really remarkable and the uh, cleanliness actually had a guy that uh, with us uh, our hr guy and he used to work in a in a human food factory oh and he said this is cleaner than the uh, wow <laughs> than the factory he had worked in i don't want to mention any names yeah but hey. uh you know another thing that was really really neat inside the factory they had a, had a posters uh of a baby you know on the floor walking in it you know with one hand in the pet food and just just to remind the uh <laughs> Yeah. remind the workers that any kind of foreign object just you know you mm-hmm. don't know where it's going to wind up it's not just sure. a pet and and of course for you know the way you were talking and certainly for me uh you know your pets are your family yes yeah and and, and when you have three old rescue cats like i do they all three of them have different issues yeah. you know one's got hairballs one's got vertigo one chews all the fur off his legs from allergies 
So basically, it's like shopping for three young kids that are picky <laughs> eaters. But I seem to always find whatever I'm looking for at home yeah. of economy. Yep. And with the uh, dog food, uh, our dogs, uh, the bigger ones, they were kind of putting on weight. And so we went with the uh, light product. And we, with those number of dogs, we, uh, we opened feed and so that they... Uh, can eat any time and with the light product they're they're both really healthy uh you know weight wise the bigger dogs the smaller dogs are getting up there in age where they were mm -hmm. uh, they were kind of hurting so we were we were going with uh well they were losing weight and whatever so we uh, started feeding them some canned food mm -hmm. of the sensitive stomach because they were yep. having upset stomachs and uh well, things you, like that we're you know it's kind of working that start to put weight back on to mm -hmm. the uh uh, it, dog. I mean, it, it's a natural for Home of Economy to sell dog food, cat food. I mean, you guys also uh, carry food and, and things, and I believe medications for, like, horses and, and livestock, too. Yeah, not as much as that. I mean, there's just not as many uh, people. I mean, back in the day, we, we sold a lot to the small dairy farmers in, around here, but, mm -hmm. you know, those guys have all kind of closed up, and the uh, the new guys, they... Uh, you know they're so big that they're buying it direct or you know mm -hmm. certainly buying it from the people we are buying it from so do you think uh, a lot of your team are they pet owners yeah oh yeah so i, yep. I mean that makes a big difference doesn't it yep oh yeah you gotta you gotta know it and whatever so but anyway we have the the science diet that's that's our biggest vendor but after that we're, we're satisfying a lot of other other things you know we have the taste of the wild which is a great product line um you know, it's, it's focusing on nat natural sources, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, that's really popular. Uh, if you, okay, like when I buy dog food, uh, I, I don't remember how big the bags are. They seem like they're about eight tons. Yeah. Uh, but if you buy a couple of bags of dog food, now what if, if, if say my wife came in there, uh, wanted to haul out a couple of bags of dog food, you guys, will you help them with oh, that? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's just it. With your store, all I got to do is probably say hey can i get a hand and it's yep. gonna be there yeah and if you know you're going right over there just uh you could stop at the, ca at the cash register and ask them you know is there anybody that can help me uh, load up some uh mm -hmm. load up your my dog food and they'll uh they'll help you all the way and that's something that uh you know the big chains can't or won't do mm -hmm. and uh that's real important to us to to do that uh you know and and, and that helps us compete against the uh uh the internet sellers sure. which are growing mm -hmm. and uh you know, because some people were doing that because they couldn't get, they they were scared of getting the uh, dog food, right? You know, into the car because they can't get help other mm -hmm. places. Well, you, we've got the help, so. You know, another thing I like about uh, Home of Economy is the fact that I can usually park really close. Um, if I'm looking to just go in and buy one bag of dog food, I'm usually in and out of there in about three minutes. Can't say that about too many other stores around Grand Forks, yeah. that is for sure, because you got to walk way around wherever, wherever. Then you come up to the 16 checkouts and you have one teller working. It's not that way at Home yep. of Economy. I mean, you, you can basically just grab and go. Yeah, that's what we're shooting for. And, uh, you know, also it's like you don't have to uh, carry it across a big, huge parking lot either. Mm -hmm. I park I park on the end of the parking lot farther than anybody. And, uh, you know, we've got big dogs, so... You know, I'm a pretty big guy, but uh, carrying that big bag <laughs> on my shoulder isn't that much fun. I know. So, you know, <laughs> and, and that's what you got to do. It, it's, you know, our competitors. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, you know, you can push the cart and whatever, then try to find a safe place to to park that so it's not uh, hurting another person's car. So Yeah, another nice thing I like about that parking lot is, uh, and I'm sure you saw this yesterday, a lot of boaters coming in. Yep. Plenty of room to keep your pickup and your boat in a nice, safe place while you walk in, get your fishing supplies or your bait or whatever. And uh, I don't know if you had a steady stream yesterday. I saw quite a few guys going in there. I just happened to be across the street for a couple oh. of minutes. So <laughs> I did see a few boats going yeah, in. That's a great place across the street too. But yeah, I mean, we have we have uh, semis to deliver to the store and our parking lot's designed to handle that. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a guy and he was uh, he was worried about how to get out here. I go, you know, no, you just, you know, the, the parking lot and the uh, roadway highway department worked with us to uh, get it easy in, easy mm -hmm. out. And, you know, your left turn going back towards town with the semi, yep, 53-foot trailer, is not going to be a problem. Yeah. So if you're pulling your boat or your horse trailer, we, mm -hmm. we see that a lot. Uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, a lot of big race car trailers in there, too. But yep. what is there? Three entrances, I believe, at the store in Grand Forks. Is that right? Yep. Off, off of uh, Highway there? Yeah, okay. Now, what would you say are the main categories in your pet department? 
Uh, well, you have the food, and mm-hmm. that goes from, uh, you know, the science diet down to Purina. So you're you're covering the thing, and then you you have the accessories and the toys, and that's kind of one thing we weren't doing real well uh, until just recently is is keeping the toys fresh. We kind of thought, well, uh, you know, a toy that was good last year is uh, is good enough for the dog this year. Mm-hmm. Well, that's probably true. The dog doesn't care about the yeah. owner. <laughs> it's it, like a fishing lure. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not putting out a fishing lure to catch a fish. You're putting out a fishing lure to catch a fisherman. Yeah, the, yeah. There you go. And, and and I would imagine too that more people this past year, because of the pandemic and all that, they've probably spent a little bit more time with their pets than they probably yeah. did before. You mean coworker? Yeah, or coworker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As we all been working at home more than. Mm-hmm. Yeah, miss um, them. You know, is the pet supply, is it an item everyone has to buy? I mean, nobody buys the same pet food all the time. Everybody's different. Every dog is different. Every cat is different. Yeah. But, I mean, once you find one that's working for you, Mm -hmm. and then then I personally stick with it. Uh, You know, I think cat owners are a little different. They're kind of, you know, traditionally cats are a little finicky or whatever. But, uh, you know, the the dog takes... Yeah. You know, what he likes is what he likes. Yeah, it's funny because uh, out of my house, I'll see a cat carrying a frog or a mouse or whatever. But then you buy them this great cat food and they put their nose up at it like, eh, I think I'd rather go eat a mouse or a frog. Yeah. Uh, finicky. It's now, better than our uh, when we had a St. Bernard one time. He oh. was carrying, carrying a live skunk around. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that linger for? Uh, it was a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, pet collars and leashes are huge now too. Um, you know, and I hate to say this, but but people are stealing dogs. People yeah. are, are are you know, you need to have a collar on your animal, uh, even if you live in the country. Like what I do is is at least I have, you know, proof of your rabies is one thing, mm-hmm. uh, but then the dog's name and then my name and phone number because if the dog does wander or if the dog does get lost or heaven forbid taken, at least that. And you guys have got a great supply of that too. Yep, but uh, you know we don't have the real decorator mm-hmm. stuff. You know, like my mom gets for her, her two dogs are. Uh, you know, she taught me to love dogs. So, but uh, her two dogs are the most spoiled uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> princesses ever. But uh, you know, we have the more basic stuff in the uh, pet collars and the leashes and and whatever. Now, I I know you have pets, uh, obviously. Yep. How many would you say? Five dogs. Five dogs. How? What kind? Uh, we have two golden retrievers. We have two. Uh, Teddy bears, which are a Shih Tzu, uh, Bashan Freeze cross. And then we have my, you know, it's really my daughter's, but she moved out and left us with a dog. But she had a rescue three-legged Chihuahua cross. Oh, jeepers. Yeah. So do all of your dogs have their own bowl? Uh, the three little ones do. Yeah. And they're the ones we, we started feeding to keep them keep the weight on them mm-hmm. and the uh, other the big dogs they just kind of eat out of the big yeah and, and you're you said kind of a science diet guy yep that's yep, where we years. use so mm-hmm. had had really good luck for the most part with the uh, dogs and staying healthy and you know uh, i also saw that you sell a lot of dog beds now oh. my problem is every time i buy a dog bed dog seems to like the floor better oh. <laughs> well not in our house i mean we've got uh, dog mm-hmm. beds all over and they uh they like them where they kind of, you know, kind of got the edge so they can kind of hold their head up on it. And uh, but, you know, that's again, that's a that's a big market that other people have different different needs. Some people like just the real price driven driven part of it. Other people like the uh, the ones with the little frills and what it, whatever. So mm-hmm. um, I, I want to kind of step back a little bit here. Uh, you had the indoor racer showcase a couple of weeks back, and uh, I have had people coming up to me on the streets and saying what a spectacular event that was. Did you, th- it, it, and people were coming in as we were there and they kept saying, wow, I never knew this was gonna be like this. And I kept, I, my answer was, when Home of Economy does something, they always do it big. Your thoughts on that, that, that indoor racer yeah. showcase? Oh, that, that was a great crowd. And uh, you know, of course, people are kind of desperate for things, you know, mm-hmm. to get out and do stuff. And uh, so it's, it's a real relief to have, but, you know, also when we do something, we want to make it no charge to the uh, to the public to, to kind of bring them in. For us, you know, even if you bring somebody who's not a regular customer, they come in the store, they look around, you got a chance to get them 
get them the next time they need something. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're not looking at uh, that we have to make money that day on that. Sure. Thing. We want to just bring us and we're on the wrong end of town, you know, for most of the other stores. So that brings, brings new people in and gets uh, noticed. So that's, that's our theory on it. You know, that's how I originally started going to Home of Economy. I was looking, I don't even remember what it was what I was looking for, but I thought, you know what? Uh, I'm having a hard time finding this. I'll just go see if Home of Economy has this. And I think a lot of people would be amazed at all of the different things that are found in Home of Economy. I mean, we've been talking a lot about pet food and pet supplies today, but um, there's pretty much some, it doesn't matter if you're a cook or if you're, cl- you're cleaning your house, if you're working in the yard or working on your machinery or feeding your animals or buying furniture, you guys have got, it's just a huge variety. Yeah, well, you know, traditionally we were, we were a, you know, we're a farm store coming out of there and that's kind of, you know, coming out of the old general store mm-hmm. mentality where you had a customer, you could give them everything. And we've tried not to, uh, to get away from that, but in the, in the market, you know, you've also got to specialize in some things so that uh, you become a destination for, for things. So mm-hmm. we're trying to keep the general overall where you don't have to shop any, anywhere else. And that's for myself. You know, I'm not getting a lot of stuff anywhere besides home economy because we have it. Mm-hmm. But then we have things we specialize in, which is like the outdoor cooking, where we, we go from the Traeger to the Weber to the new Napoleon grills, which are really uh, impressive in the uh, gas end. And then the uh, Blackstone griddles. And, uh, but we've also gone into the, uh, you know, having the best selection of uh, spices and rubs and then a good selection of uh, barbecue sauces. So we're, we're trying to be the destination in that category. I know my favorite uh, rub is still butchers. I, I love it. I go to Home of Economy mm-hmm. to get it all the time. Now, when, when we sit and talk with you, Wade, you, I mean, it doesn't matter if we're talking about grilling on a Traeger, you're, you're, all, you're like an expert on it. Uh, obviously talking about pet foods, same thing. Say somebody, you know who they are out there, they get their first puppy because they think they're going to be so easy and so cute or their Mm -hmm. first kitten. There's a lot of work to them. Now, if somebody was to come up to you and say, look, I just got this new Chihuahua puppy, what kind of advice would you give them as far as uh, training, food, the bedding, the supplies they need. Yeah, well, just just start easy and have reasonable expectations. So you're not, you know, expecting to be a perfect little puppy, and you know they're they're gonna have accidents, mm-hmm. and uh, you know how to train them or whatever. And if uh, you know, and I'm not really the expert in in all this stuff, mm-hmm. but we have them at the store. But you've too. got a lot of experience, yeah. though. Oh yeah, and uh, you know don't don't feel like you got to spend a ton of money you know invest so in good food because mm-hmm. that that starts them off in a healthy yeah healthy life and but you don't need you don't need the most expensive uh yeah and, bed or anything but i would get a crate because that's how you train them to, sure that's how you train them to uh then hustle them outside so they, yeah uh, and when you get this pup don't go buy a 50 dollar bag of dog food because you don't know if the dog is going to like it first off and another thing about good healthy dog food is what's left out in the yard. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't moon dance worth a, worth anything, but when I step in one of those landmines in my yard, I mean, I make Michael Jackson look bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, healthy food is very important. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. And it, uh, you know, it, it, it moves you from, you know, you, what you feed them as a puppy can make a difference on their hips mm-hmm. when they're 10 years old and uh add to that longevity so yeah and if you have large dogs that is when you're going to run run into that problem more or not uh than if you have small dogs yep for sure so any big things in the near future going on at home of economy this year um well right now we're just kind of trying to uh you know you know trying to keep up with everything springs springs coming in and uh you know we're getting a lot of business there we're uh we're trying to get uh, restocked in a bunch of stuff that's been, you know, going or hasn't come in. Some of our, unfortunately, some of our suppliers are uh, are delayed on their shipments. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're uh, scrambling to to at least offer something in that category. Sure. The lawnmowers has been a tough, uh, tough area this Is year. Is it tough to get them in? Yeah. I it was just talking to a guy from uh, one of our buying groups today, and he said it's all over, so... Well, again, I'd, I'd like to mention uh, Scott back in your shop back there. Uh, I, I talked to him yesterday. My mower is done, but he does an incredible job yeah. back there. 
Um, how long did how long did it take there? Um, well, I actually I brought it to him a few weeks ago, and he had me up high on the list. But then I told him I said I don't need this uh-huh. until like the beginning or the end of the first week in May. So and yeah, it was done. But yeah. so normally, if I'm I bring glad it to hear that it was timely, and oh, that's it, that's huge, and it could be mm-hmm. that can be a challenge for small engine mechanic. Great story. Uh, it was two years ago. Uh, my lawnmower was dead. It wouldn't do anything. So I called Scott up. He said, "Yeah, load it up, bring it in." So I went and dropped it off. We we pushed it off the trailer. I went across the street for a quick one, and all of a sudden, my phone rang, and it was him. He said, "Hey, I fixed your mower. It's running." And I'm like, "What did you do to it?" had the pto button turned on so it wouldn't do it. <laughs> oh i've done i've done things like that oh so. boy, you know what i've been, <clears throat> ran that same mower for years and yeah. it's like what in the world all of a sudden i just went blank now spring is the time of the year uh people are starting to get into the gardens now and in home of economy i mean you've got a lot of gardening supplies seeds uh, i know i need to plant some yep. more grass but it's all there yep oh yeah the grass seed has been really hot this mm-hmm. year and uh we brought in a brought in a ton of grass seed. I couldn't believe it, and uh, um, it's gone. It's it's gone really well. Drum Rivards, it's a local local product, so it's kind of adapted for for our country. And I've myself, I've uh, you know have a new house on my old property, and they ripped up all the grass around. Mm-hmm. around and uh, so I'm trying to get my grass going, and the front yard is uh, starting to look a little bit green. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah, same with me. I had some trenching done on my yard last year. They're roofing my house this year. So I've <clears throat> had equipment and stuff going around the yard, and, and I'm going to need to do some serious work. But also a good thing about this time of the year, Wade, when we talk about, um, you know, gardening and planting grass, grilling season. It's oh. <laughs> one of my favorite times of the year. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I'm a year-round uh, Traeger user, but, you know, in the summer, uh that's uh that's when it's a lot of fun and and then when you're getting up to the lake and you have more time in the weekend so uh that should be that should be hot and that's something we haven't had a problem getting in so we have a great supply of the uh, Traegers and the other grills in right now so uh that's good I mean I know uh, a lot of people are had their Traeger for a while and now they're uh now they want to bring the old one to the lake and mm-hmm. keep the new, keep the buy a new one and, and not only the grills themselves, but you have got rows and aisles full of grilling and cooking supplies, too. Yeah. Um, really quick, you mind if I jump in here? Yeah. Um, so do you uh, carry the, is it the Blackstone ones? Is that what they're yeah, called? Yeah, the Blackstone griddles. Yeah. Those, um, are, those, are, those are great. I mean, I, I, I don't use it as much myself, but like our store manager says he uses it more than his, than his Traeger. And that's wow. that, that was my question. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to hook up my camera, okay. but because um, yeah, I've been like I've it. been looking at getting one of these, and I'm I'm tossed up between a Traeger and uh, the other one. I mean, what's do you know the difference between them? The Blackstone and the Traeger? Uh, yeah, and the tra- Yeah. Well, the Blackstone's a, just a big uh, cooking surface, like a fry service, like uh, a big surface, griddle. like a griddle. So, like fast food or whatever, so you can uh, you know. Fry up uh, sandwiches or hamburgers, make the smash burgers. Mm-hmm. I actually like them better that way. My wife likes them better on the Traeger. So. Yep, and uh, they're great for breakfast. Yep, making know. making French toast. And, mm-hmm. and at the lake where I've got a 36-inch one at the lake, and then I've got a 17-inch my uh, daughter bought me for Father's Day a couple years ago at home. Mm. But it, I, you know, do it more at the lake. But uh, is, is but you, you don't. Sorry, you, but you can't like the Traeger. You do smoking on. You can't. Right. You can't do that on the uh, on the Blackstone. There's an accessory um, that they make to mm-hmm. to add to the Traeger that you can put on there. Oh. Uh, it's not super proper uh, popular, but if you have a space issue, it, it probably makes a lot of sense. But to me, having both that are ready to go. He might even use them at the same time that way. Or mm-hmm. for, oh, great. Now, now I got to buy both. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, here, <laughs> I, I can tell you a Traeger is a grill, a smoker, and a convection oven, and yeah. the Blackstone is a griddle. Yep. You think I've been around you guys in those Traeger grills enough? <laughs> yeah, but on the, on the Blackstone, one of the favorite things to do is, uh, is to do the, uh, you know, the Japanese-style cooking. Hmm. You know, like you, you get at uh, Fuji here yeah. in town. Yeah, yeah. hibachi mm-hmm. style. Yeah. Yep. And so you, you can do it, and that, that cooking, you know, every time I go to those places, it's wonderful. And with a little bit of practice, you can emulate that and do it, do it at home and show off to, you know, invite a bunch of friends. And so you'll, you'll have that thing covered with the, first you do the fried rice, then you do the steak, chicken, scallops, 
uh, maybe get some cheap lobster tails, which yeah. is always... And, and, I, and now I got to learn how to juggle knives too. Yeah, I was going to say that you, <laughs> you got to get the spatula and do all this and throw an egg up and cut it. You know, the the one thing that I learned because they they always slice the uh, the meats at the table or on the on the uh, on the uh, hibachi grill, mm-hmm. but do that before because it's a you know when they're doing it. I mean, it makes me really imp- impressed with the job those yeah. guys do. And I, now when I go to those places for a birthday or something, I'm watching how they do it. it, it when you talk about the Blackstone, you said you got the 17-inch for for your birthday? Is yep, Father's that, Day. Or Father's Day. Is that the smallest one they make? Because the reason I ask is because I see more and more and more of them on boats now, especially yeah. when we're fishing tournaments, and you are in that boat all day long. You can only eat cold sandwiches and beef yep. jerky for so, for so long. They also have the 17-inch, which isn't, bad at all and mm-hmm. it gets it gets plenty hot and everything and runs on the little uh you know green propane tank yep. but there's also a 22 inch it's a little bigger if you have a bigger party but you can get a lot done on a 17 inch uh we got a text from a lady named sherry enjoy shopping at home of economy Thanks. that was our main stop out in williston when we lived there so easy to transition when we moved to grand forks oh, wonderful gotta like hearing that yeah man um how is the farmer's market going? Uh, it hadn't started yet, okay. but we, we do want to, you know, we we don't charge. We encourage everybody to, that wants to to sell uh, produce in our parking lot. And, uh, you know, it's still early for that stuff. But uh, Greenhouse, which uh, um, Tim Shea's nursery, mm-hmm. they, they run the greenhouse for us. It's just kind of easier. That's their specialty. So are, are they set up yet or almost? They got the greenhouse set up, but uh, they don't have any product in okay. there. But uh, they're moved in. The bag product is moved in, so it shouldn't be long before that's ready to go. You know, I brought up Farmer's Market. Let's talk a little bit about farmers and farming. It is that time of the year. I'm sure you have uh, had conversations with numerous numerous farmers throughout the store and throughout the last few weeks. But what are they telling you this year? Uh, I mean, I know it's dry, but what are the farmers saying yeah. to you? Well, I think they're, you know, except for being dry, I think that's their main concern. I think they're feeling pretty good otherwise Mm -hmm. uh, you know i mean a lot of these guys already got seed in the ground oh yeah now just hopefully it doesn't snow right yeah (laughs) well you know i think what they put in is the stuff that's more uh frost resistant Mm -hmm. Uh, you know they don't do like this the beans until the week of memorial weekend or Mm -hmm. something like that but uh they've been busy and they've been uh you know buying that delvac oils uh oh yeah yeah that's going they all use it Mm -hmm. yeah um, and I'm, I'm waiting and we're super stoked because I know it's going to be here anytime, but uh, we ordered it and I know how furniture is going right now. Um, we ordered a, a nice rocking chair uh, from the Amish gallery and it should be here any day and we are super excited. Yeah, I'm waiting for some uh, bedroom furniture. And yeah. we, we had a truck this week and I was like watching to see if it was uh, mine was in there, but the bedroom guy is a little bit further behind. You know, those Amish guys you know it's it's all kind of small shops mm-hmm. and then we mm-hmm. have a person we deal with that makes the dining room but uh, then they consolidate for us at a you know mm-hmm. and so we're dealing with one guy but they're dealing with all these little cabinet makers and, and sure. whatever so it's it's pretty cool and i had a chance to go out there a couple of years ago it was really neat i i would love to watch that um <coughs> excuse me where we hunt uh there are actually some some amish around there and if there's a little bit of snow on the ground during deer hunting, you can always tell when you're coming up on them because you see the buggy tracks on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. That's going, I mean, that's like old school. That's pretty neat oh, stuff. Yeah. And they do amazing work. Oh, yeah. They're they're real craftsmen. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming in again today. Yeah. Man, Great we love having you. I, I could talk about Home of Economy all oh. day long. <laughs> it's my favorite store. And I'm not just saying that. I am in there all the time. All right, Wade Pearson, thank you very much from Home of Economy. Tell you what, if you're looking for pet food, any pet supplies, Home of Economy, you know, a lot of you might not think, wow, I never thought about going there for my dog food or my cat food or my pet supplies, but they have got a huge selection. Uh, That's where I buy a lot of mine. Check them out, Home of Economy. They've got locations where now? Uh, We're at eight locations and the internet, so... uh from uh, Watford City, Williston, Minot, uh, Rugby is the new one, Devil's Lake, uh, Grand Forks, and uh, Grafton. Did All I right. say Minot? Uh, okay, and I Minot. So, yeah. so my, uh, my wife's uh, grandma is in rugby, and they are super oh. jazzed that you guys put up that location there. What a what a cool town. I mean, I, I really like it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just they, they just have the old downtown still. They have, you know, 
every every place clean and like they're kept up. And stepping nice. back in time, but with yep. a new home of economy. Yep. All right. Well, thank you again, Wade Pearson. There you go. Until next time, it's our Home of Economy podcast on Grand Fork's Best Source.